Hello, it's Scott Manley here with Kerbal Space Program Point Two Two. We are still doing science. This is the second mission after my uh, launch to Minmus using the basic hardware. We have all three of the Kerbals on this one rocket, but two of them get out immediately to uh, do some research, leaving Jebediah to fly this thing to the stars. Now, this uh, obviously is. Uh, a whole lot less capable than a similarly sized rocket from my uh, from the sandbox. We're missing fuel lines. That's probably the most important thing. We still haven't got any um, any parts which provide torque other than the capsules. We uh, what else? I don't know. We're missing RCS systems. We're missing aerodynamics that let us steer. So we're uh, you know really kind of guessing our way through this. I, I think I made a mistake in the way I unlocked things. I should have really unlocked more science experiments. The idea here is I want to get enough science to practically break out as much of the tree as possible. So how what what I'm doing is when I I've got two experiments that I've unlocked. I've got the materials exposure, or whatever the material lab uh, experiment, and the the goo canister. Now, you can run those experiments and transmit the stuff home, but to basically exhaust all the science in a particular region, you you have to kind of right-click, do the science, transmit, and repeat until the amount of science you're getting drops to, like, less than one or something. On top of that, of course, you still have the EVA and you have the, um, you know, crew reports and uh, surface samples. So there's a whole... A decent amount of things to get science from but all the same it would have been far smarter if I had made a point of unlocking experiments rather than unlocking uh, parts. Regardless I think I've got something big enough my plan is to head out uh, towards towards uh, Eve. Eve is the place we know that we can land on Gilly there. Note that I have landing gear on this that proved to be rather optimistic since a uh, the only place I was going to be able to land was Gilly, and you don't actually need any landing gear for Gilly, do you? Uh, you can just kind of lay the thing down on its side, can't you? But yeah, you, this is this is a four-hour video that I've chopped out lots of me right-clicking, you do science, right-click, do science, transmit, and just do that in a, le in a loop for hours and hours. Uh, and this is uh, this is what it takes if you want to max out your science tree as quickly as possible. So, you know, I did it in a high Kerbal orbit, and then I did it in deep space. Now I'm trying to get a rendezvous with uh, Eve. I did not bother to wait for any uh, launch windows. So what I do is I basically target Eve, and then I spin around until I know... I orbit the sun until I know that there's a, a good chance of me actually getting an encounter. At which point I then actually attempt to make that encounter happen, and that takes a little bit of manoeuvring and finagling. But uh, all you need to do is put the nodes close enough to each other. And you see, for example, this encounter, they're about as far away as possible. That's fine. Let it go around one more time and see how it looks. Eventually you're going to get a couple of nodes that are close enough that you can seriously consider uh, actually going for the encounter it becomes a case of just trimming so let's see come around and the next time around what happens we get i, I don't remember but I, I know that some of the cases i had to spin around the sun you know dozens of times this is a third time round. let's see what happens and oh wait when we pass through is it oh it's when you pass through perihelion no so I'm moving the nodes to get them closer together. Ah, there we go. So yeah, we have two nodes and it is now going to be ahead of me in the orbit. So what I do is I accelerate along my orbital vector to uh, make sure that I spend, or I accelerate retrograde, dump some of my fuel tanks as well, because of course no fuel lines means I need to do all that manually. So what I'm doing is I'm slowing my orbit down, dropping my Apple apps so that I spend less time, and that should bring the, the nodes closer together. And yes, there we go, actual encounter. So it only took three orbits uh, in which, during what, 200 days during which Jebediah was stuck inside his can all on his own. Um, 
this is going to be a long mission. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we're going to we just make some efforts to trim this maneuver now down. Of course, if we're going to land on Gilly, we need to perform an aero break. And that is quite sensitive if you're doing that around Eve. You want to get in around 73. If you go too low, you will find yourself in trouble. If you go too high, you will find yourself wasting fuel. And I have a decent amount of fuel, actually, at this time. I essentially have three three of those uh, normal tanks. So we should get uh, several kilometers per second Delta V out of that. Of course, I guess I'm not taking into account the mass of the experiments and all their myriad of wonderful bits and bobs and gizmos that are being used to... Uh, study science in this little Kerbal corner of the universe so yeah you see how I do this I, I make a trim maneuver and then I make another trim maneuver and I keep on making trim maneuvers until I'm satisfied with where I am we want to fly past Eve and then we want to perform aero capture then we're going to rendezvous with Gilly and so with the planets right you can do science on the surface but obviously there's only one place I'm going to do that then you can do science near the planet and then you can do science high above the planet and so you can perform the same experiment in these three locations now high up you generally have lots of time so you can just kind of point your spacecraft at the sun and let it um you know, transmit the data, let it recharge, transmit it, repeat. But when you're swinging by things in low orbit, it's quite possible that you swing through the low orbit encounter and out the other side before you have actually managed to max out all your experiments. So it's not to be, you're not guaranteed to get 100% of the science from this. And, and as I said, the way to really get most science is to make sure you unlock as many experiments as possible and bring as many experiments with you as you can so they're making another encounter here you see that the gravity assist from eve is actually going to do a pretty good job of circularizing my orbit this is almost like the the sentinel mission isn't it where we use an encounter with the inner planet to circularize the orbit okay coming down this is not the best way to get into an encounter with gilly is it and uh, add add to this we are going the wrong way around so we need to rotate the whole thing around which is surprisingly hard to do using maneuver nodes if you want to move a maneuver node from one side of the planet or encounter from one side of the planet to the other it's actually not the easiest thing to do using the maneuver node system I, a lot of the time i find myself just pointing and thrusting and so now we're in low EVE orbit. We're, of course, now, or not even orbit, we're having a near EVE encounter. At this point, this is when we're doing extra science and we're getting more points for it. So, yeah, high, near, and surface. I think EVE has atmosphere as well. There's like a one when you're in the atmosphere but not landed on the surface. But I'm not sure what the altitudes are. Perhaps they are coded into the game. I haven't yet found out. So to get an encounter with Gilly, of course, we need to get these things to interact and that uh well first thing you do is lift up your uh periaps here so that you're not re-entering the atmosphere and slowing down now from here we want to actually lift up our apple apps and the reason is we want to lift our apple apps up because as it gets higher up it gives us more um it gives us the ability to change the plane more efficiently and we want to perform plane changes so that we can actually get somewhat close to Gilly and there's a bit of that go there's a bit of that we uh, circularize the orbits a bit more and you see how this moves the nodes away from the planet and therefore reduces the velocity the the relative change we need to adjust our um, inclination down and a bit of that going on so yeah, I mean, it, it, with with inclination, I've pointed out repeatedly that you, you want to do that as far away from the planet as possible, as slow as possible, because you are burning perpendicular to your velocity. Uh, similarly, if you have a need to uh, adjust your orbit using your um, the radial or the anti-radial directions, then you similarly will have to do, you'll have to do it when you're as slow as possible. But yeah, we get our Gilly encounter. We are now, of course, 
near enough to Gilly, we slow ourselves down and we start experimenting away. Again, very slow and boring. Get ourselves down close to the surface. I put myself down 10 kilometers from the surface. I put myself in that orbit thinking that would qualify for near Gilly. Nope, it doesn't qualify for near Gilly. I think it's down more about like six kilometers before you can actually start doing the near Gilly experiment. There we go, there. We're at, you can see us transmitting, transmitting as best we can. Trans the little transmitter is working as hard as it can here. I'm only carrying the little transmitters because I looked at the numbers and it seemed to me that they were actually just as good as the fancy higher tech ones with this folding dish and all that stuff. Looks like the good old fashioned Communitron is quite capable. So of course we land and uh, do some experiments on the surface to make sure we uh, capture the character of Gilly. We do a lot of this. We are going to go on and go elsewhere. Yeah. And uh, Jebediah jumps out, sets up his flag, saying, Gilly! Ah, the Gilly! Uh, takes his sample, and we head back into space. Now, uh, at this point, we I thought maybe I should head home. And then uh, as I got out, I realized, actually, you know, I have a lot of fuel, so I'm going to head some other places first. We are talking about trying to get as much science out of this mission as possible. So more destinations I can go to, the better. The more things I can find out. So uh, performing the standard escape maneuver from the, the Gilly uh, encounter, right? There's only li there's limits as to where you can escape efficiently. Now I'm going to head towards Duna, which takes a bit of, bit of effort here. So you see the... We have, uh, we've got an encounter, not an encounter, we have the, the Apple apps out roughly at the same distance as Duna, but the ascending and descending nodes are not aligned. So what I'm going to do here is make, yeah, make a rotation of the orbit so that the nodes are at least close. One of the nodes ends up close to Duna. And then it's a case of, again, orbiting repeatedly until we get do not actually arrive in close and we're very lucky look it arrives there so the way to make this one is to because it's slightly behind we just need to make our orbit slightly bigger and sure enough we make the burn get ourselves an encounter and there we go so now next stop gilly and we got to make some some tweaks here the nice thing about gilly or not gilly nice thing about duna pardon me is that because Ike is so big, you it's actually very easy to get an encounter with both Duna and uh, Ike. And you see we have one here, except that I realized that I can get a better and closer encounter, right? It was a thousand kilometer or something like that. I get this encounter down to something like 10 kilometers. And then I realized that 10 kilometers is actually too low. If you do a 10 kilometer encounter with Gilly, you will probably fly into a mountain. But yeah, what we're doing is we, you see, we are coming around that side of the planet and just by rotating things around, we use the gravity of Duna to adjust our orbit to get it nice and close to Ike so that we can like Ike. That's the message. If, if you uh, get in low orbit and you ask the crew what they think, they say, I can't help but like Ike. It's very cute. I, I, I'm not reading any of these messages because there, frankly, there were far too many of them. I could just go and open up the the documentation or the config file and tell you all the cool messages that were in there. So yeah, again, near Duna, jumping out, taking all the taking all the readings, doing more science, transmitting that science home. That's the way we roll. And now, of course, we're flying towards Ike, and I do have to make a slight trim because, as I said, ten kilometers is too low. It's almost like I actually flew into a mountain and then reloaded, huh? <laughs> would I do such a thing? Uh, yes, I would. <laughs> but yeah, and Ike, the only thing is with this one is I couldn't spam the science repeatedly because we ended up zipping past on the night side. So we transmit each experiment once and then once we come out the other side, we transmit a little more, but... 
we uh well we basically can't max out our science in this area so again that's another thing that i did not do perfectly well here uh you know there's a lot of flaws with this mission now next we're going to try and get an encounter with with a Kerbin because of course the plan was that i could go home and after all i've been flying for like two and a half hours now and it was you know of course jebediah had been in the capsule for 600 days but uh I, well, what happens is, again, we do the same trick where we just try to adjust the maneuver node, or not the nodes, the the inclination, the ascending and descending node to put them close to Kerbin's orbit. And you actually see that both of them are relatively close, so in a pinch, I could swap it around and uh, pick whichever node was necessary for the encounter. But, well, we come around to uh, Apple or Periaps, the come out and oh yeah it's gonna this is us we actually have to make the the inclination change here so that we can in, perform this encounter that's not a problem little bit of burn perpendicular to the plane dropping the things down uh, and you know you notice that i'm not doing i'm not aligning the planes right normally you would just normally there's a plan where you kind of align the planes of the orbits what i'm not doing that what i'm just doing is trying to put one of the ascending or descending nodes right on the target orbit and then adjust the period of the orbit so that we arrive at the same place at the same time just like that that was a that was another very lucky one here so just by slowing down a little i adjust the timing and i arrive at the same time there was no planning put into this at all. There was no phase angle tool. There was no, uh, you know, no pork chop plots or anything. I literally am just guessing my way through this thing. Uh, it, that's why it's such terrible trajectory. That's why Jebediah spends so much time in deep space waiting for things to be just right. Anyway, uh, I got into adjusting my encounter with the planet Kerbin. I was wanting to zip in, you know, really close and not too steep because the actual encounter velocity here will be about five kilometers per second because we're actually encountering it quite, you see how we're cutting across the orbit quite steeply? That will actually mean a, a big change. But yeah, I start adjusting and I say, hey, look, with the right encounter, I can actually get uh, a gravity assist that will make me fly down to Moho's orbit. So, great! We're gonna... We're, sorry, Jebediah, we are not going home. We are going to Moho first, because you know what's at Moho? Moho has more science. And we want to get as much science as possible on this mission. So, yeah. It, it also fortuitously put one of the nodes almost exactly at the orbit. But I did have to wait about a thousand days which, you know, took quite a long time. Took about a thousand days of Jebediah sitting in space. That would be also 4,000 Kerbal days in uh, his tiny capsule. But uh, we got it. We got the encounter. And uh, from that point, it's just a case of f of trimming it so that we fly past, uh, fly past Moho as close as possible. You want to get the high altitude and you want to get the low altitude. If you only get the high altitude then you are leaving science on the table. You are not getting as much science out of this system as you can. And so we approach in. Watch the encounter coming up. And you'll notice that I slow down time acceleration for every node crossing because, of course, I don't want my very precise orbits to be messed up by the... Uh, stepping from one situation to the other, stepping between sphere of influences. Regardless, we fly past Moho, below 20 kilometers here. Notice that? We're getting all the data. We are doing all the science. And we still actually have a fair amount of fuel left. I almost considered continuing on towards a Joule here because I figured that we could adjust our curb in trajectory and return to Joule, but... Um, you know, there was, I'm, I was pretty tired. I'm sorry. I gave up. I was, I was not sufficiently, <laughs> I was not sufficiently, uh, rested to continue this. The whole time I spent on this clocked in at something like four hours, ultimately. 
Uh, there was a lot of... And, and you've obviously had a very, very compacted version of it. Frankly, a lot of it was spent clicking on things, doing science, and then retransmitting it. But uh, luck was also on my side. I literally fly over the space center on the way back. We get within 50 kilometers of the space center as well, which uh, is a nice ending to this epic voyage. Uh, several thousand days, tw oh, wait, 2200 days basically he spent in that capsule. <laughs> His suit looks orange, but really it's brown. No, ah, no, no, never mind. And we have a little bit of fuel left to cushion our landing to make sure that nothing breaks. And yes, of course, we take water samples and EVA reports and recover it. So we now have like 4,700 science in the bank. We recover the vehicle. We're up to 6,000 science and then... We had a little more science from uh, Bill and Bob who uh, were asked to explore the landing pad. So yeah, expand our science tree. We want all the experiments. The experiments are the things that help us get more science and more science helps us get more experiments. So uh, it's a very good idea to try and unlock experiments first. Yeah, unlock the nuclear engine. That's awesome because I like the nuclear engine. Fuel lines got those, got docking. So, I mean, based on this, I think you could probably max out the tech tree with two missions. But uh, I messed it up because I didn't pick the right unlocks during after the first mission. So I think it's theoretically possible to max out the default tech tree with two missions. And I'm sure somebody will do just that. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. <laughs>